Friday, okay? Let's do it, man. Let's go to the uh, Zoom room where we have a uh, smorgasbord of mayors joining us uh, for breakfast. Uh, we have the, the mayor's council president, Daddy Do Mayor Melissa Savarez. And we also have from Tatuja, uh, Mayor Louise Rivera. Good morning, Mayor Louise. Good morning. And Good morning. from Petey. I Petey the fool. Uh, Mayor Jesse Alley. Good morning. Uh, let's just start. Uh, we'll go around, Robin. We'll start with you, Mayor Savars. We wanted to get your reaction to this whole uh, incident and the comments made by Dr. Akimoto yesterday on, on the link. So uh, go ahead, and uh, Mayor Savars. We'll start with you and then Mayor Louise and then Mayor Jesse. Okay. Um, uh, good, morning. good morning. Um, I didn't hear, uh, the, the comments by Dr. Akimoto, but I hear the concerns of our entire communities, uh, especially physicians that, um, we're not talking clusters anymore. We're talking families. Uh, I know in Derrida, we have over 200 positive cases and the concern that we have is there's families, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I'm concerned because I have a whole family, husband, wife, the wife is a nurse, husband, wife, and children are all in, are best tested positive. So, you know, what can we, what we're, what we're going to do as mayors is that we, we just got to go out there and, and look for families that are gathering and ask them to, uh, some of them are not wearing masks. If they're not, if they're in the same household, of course I understand, but now we have a whole household, including the children. Uh, in some households that are, that are in, you know, that ha are tested positive. And that's our concern is, uh, you know, everybody's protecting themselves. I mean, frontliners, you know, we had a frontliner that, that lost the battle to COVID the other day. And, you know, I mean, how does she protect her families? How do they protect their families? That's our concern. Mayor Louise. That, um, and, you know, I, I, I deal with Dr. Komodo all the time and, you know, he's very compassionate um, in, you know, what he says and does. But, um, you know, um, as for the, you know, the remarks of the profanity, you know, um, I, that was his way of expressing things. And, you know, so, um, you know, we just hope that people will continue to understand and, and, and um, you know, let's try to get this curve to go down because, you know, um, there's so many people affected. Uh, we're on the front lines every day. Um, me and my staff, we've gotten tested, you know, already three times, you know, so even with the numbers, I mean, if that is it, is that what making it really climb up high? Because so many of us are getting retested over and over because, you know, um, you know, we're having to be on the job every day even on weekends, you know, out there with the community testing, even if it's at private clinics, you know, we're out there um, assisting with with traffic control and everything, you know, so I know he, um, he was frustrated, you know, and you know, uh, you know, all my, my comments are, you know, some people are, are happy of how he was expressing himself, but some people are upset of the way he did it, you know, and so um, you know, everyone, everyone uh, right now um, just, you know, has to, um, you know, uh, have patience for one another and, um, you know, do the best to respect each other, uh, you know, to help. I mean, instead of just criticizing and, you know, things like that, I mean, let's try and help find solutions, you know, for um, everybody to be at ease and see, you know, how we can help each other get through this. Mayor Alec? So I, what I would like to say was, is that his reaction um, says so much about the pandemic and, and how we're dealing with it on Guam. Our people um, at, at all levels, whether you're a physician, whether frontliner, uh, whether you're at home, the pandemic is just getting the best of us. And um, I feel that it, it probably would be best to have, um, you know, better communication with everyone so that everyone knows what's going on. Um, and I want to relate to the PCOR statuses, uh, just like we, we relate to typhoon conditions. Um, you know, it, when, when there's typhoon condition one, nobody goes out. 
everybody stays home, right? No one, you you know that everyone's prepared. So at PCOR 1, everyone should really be home, just like if, if it was Typhoon Condition 1. And, uh, and I just feel like all the different changes with the with PCOR 1 and the regulations under PCOR 1 from last week to this week to next week, it gets everyone confused. And that's what kind of irates everyone. And, you know, I wouldn't want to be the governor at this point. <laughs> you know, God bless her and everyone that's helping her. But um, at the same time, you know, we've, we've known COVID since January. Um, and, and March it really affected us as an island. And I think, you know, maybe five months from March to maybe July, we could have probably had a better idea, a better handle on how we can, we can treat the PCOR statuses so that the residents are clear just like we are clear with uh, typhoon conditions. Because, you know, we're, we're smart people, we're intelligent, whether you're Chamorro, whether you're Gomenian and you consider Guam home. I think we, the government needs to have more faith in our people mm. because we are intelligent people. And, I, and, and Mayor Louise is right and Mayor Savar is working together. Communicating is probably the best tool at this point because mm. the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing sometimes. And, and yes, it's all a process. Yes, it's new, but by golly, it's going to be September and PCOR 1, uh, P PCOR 1, the status PCOR 1 should really be, you know, clear to everyone right. so that whether it's your, whether you're a business, whether you're, uh, you know, whether you're an employee as an example, and I, I know I'm moving away from what Dr. Akimoto said, no, but what I'm, so, right. what I'm, it's all relative. what I'm pointing at is that he has reached a point in his professional career and, and in his personal opinion that, you know, it's, it's just over the top. And I feel like a lot of people are, are there already. Uh, some people just have given up and just, you know, you know, forget it. I'm just going to stay home and do nothing. And what the other doctors are saying are, well, you need to exercise. Well, some people have just given up and just stayed home. Uh, so yes, it's difficult, but I think together as a community, we can work together to communicate. And, and like Mayor Savar said, we do go out to our, our communities and we do check to see what's going on. And we try to provide the guidance, but we cannot provide proper guidance if that's not being given to us as well. Mm -hmm. So again, it, it's not trying to criticize, it's, it's, we're trying to work together, right. but we can't work together if, if we're not communicating properly and we're not, uh, you know, the, like I said, the regulations under PCOR 1 change. I mean, you're so, going to buy a car? What the heck does buying a car got to do with anything? <laughs> I mean, you're right, the mayors, and I just got to say, <laughs> nothing changed since last week except things got worse. So where I'm coming from is why are we opening more things when it's gotten worse from last week? I think what Dr. Felix Cabrera uh, had mentioned during the press conference yesterday was what the governor did when she uh, eased, it appears that she eased up the restrictions right. uh, during the press conference, was that she was actually restoring it to what it was when... Um, you initially declare PCOR 1. Right. So what was changed was those were the stricter guidelines, right? right when she right, right. when she um, implemented the lockdown. Dropped the, the hammer. The first day at home order. Right. But no, yeah, yeah, I can agree. I mean, Dr. <clears throat> Dr. Shea had pointed it out yesterday that there's like these mixed messages yeah. that are out there. Totally agree. I mean, right. uh, yeah, so I that if, and that's a big if one. Those you know, if, if, so all of those conditions could be under PCOR 2, so that everyone knows that all the residents know under PCOR 2, this is exactly what you need to do. Just as if it was a typhoon, you go out and you get your, your supplies for two, three weeks, you shutter up your homes and get ready to, to lock up, gas your cars. PCOR 1, or, um, typhoon condition 1, everybody stays home. So if in PCOR 2, uh, certain businesses can operate, right. uh, you can do certain things, P, uh, PCOR 1, you know, they're, and it doesn't change and it shouldn't change because right. then it just confuses everyone. Yeah, um, right. And I, I'm only saying that because I have to deal with that in PD in such a right. small village, right? right. Yeah. Uh, and, and an example <laughs> is an employee calls and asks, so he, they're a construction worker, can they report to work? Well, why shouldn't you report to work? Oh, because the executive order says no construction work or no construction outside the fence, right outside the base. So it's like, oh, well, the best thing to do is check your employer. Well, can mm -hmm. the employer force you to work? Well, you know, I don't want to tell the, the employee that anything because I'm not going to pay them. Uh, right. So the best thing for them to do is call 311 and get the information from 311. And if you have to report your employer, then so be it. 
Right. But, well, I, you know, and I wouldn't want to, I, I employ people too. So I, I don't want to, I wouldn't want to be put in a situation, you know, like right. that. And let's so, uh, move along from here. Uh, Mayor Savares, you know, we had talked to Dr. Hoa uh, last week and he had talked about enlisting the mayor's council um, to uh, this, week, yeah. th- this week to enforce uh, a lot the of these. stay at home orders. Okay. Uh, yeah, this week he was on our show, I think it was Wednesday, and he was talking about enlisting the help in, of the Mayor's Council of Guam, all of the mayors, to basically help report people that are violating the stay-at-home orders that are out there, I don't know, gallivanting or whatever. Have you guys had yeah. uh, any audience with uh, the PAG? No, no, we haven't. And, you know, with the shutdown, we're really limited to what kind of audience we can have with whoever, right, whatever groups. And so one, I did have a conversation with Dr. Nguyen uh, last night, and, um, and and I will be reaching out to my colleagues via our, uh, our chat group to ask, because, you know, like I said, his concern is it's not clusters, it's not people gathering at funerals, it's not people gathering at, at events, because there's nothing going on, you know. Um, it's, it's family units, it's from the home. And, and like I said, I have several families who the one spouse is a first responder and now the rest of the family in that household has are positive um, for COVID. So with the exception of maybe one one or two people in the household. And, um, you know, so those are the concerns. Uh, even with contract tracing, uh, the positive cases, you find yesterday we had 112. The day before was 136. Are they coming from groups? You you see uh, different um, the schools. You know the schools throughout our island. They were in preparation. The staff was in preparation for the children to return in the last two weeks. So of course you still have very like a skeleton crew operating. And what's happening is somebody who's going there didn't realize that they were in contact with someone else, whether it be at home or through the school through a co-worker and they continued to come in until they finally tested and they tested positive now everybody that they were in contact with whether it be at work or at home have to be t- tested for through the contact tracing and um you know i just feel sorry for our public health nurses because they're the ones at the northern health center that are doing all these and so we see the lines the, the the testing for the contact tracing and so i understand with dr Wed when he says it's not cluster groups anymore because offices have closed the part you know the, the stores have closed with the exception of the um groceries you know so it's not them contacting it in in these big groups it's contact through the home home front right. so you know just ask for us to ask families to Please not gather, you know, at, I mean, what do you do? You have people that live together. How are, you know, uh, they're not having other family members from other places come in. Where are they contacting this from? Uh, Mayor Louise, you had uh, that protest in your village in Tumon, the constitutional rights uh, people. Uh, If you could just give us your, your thoughts on that. And then also have you, uh, been approached and are you ready to start uh, snitching on your residents who are disobeying the uh, stay-at-home orders and uh, breaking the restrictions? Well, we have gotten calls about um, people that are um, um, residents that are having um, a lot of people at their homes and so um, people will call me and we so we do what we can to talk to them reach out to them, let them know um, that, uh, you know, they're not living the household, that they shouldn't be there. Um, a lot of the neighbors, you know, um, uh, that have these issues, you know, um, with, um, uh, you know, their, their next door neighbors having a lot of people, it's, it's, a, it's surrounding their house. So people are calling in to us all the time. And, um, you know, we, we do what we can to talk to them about it. You know, um, even with those that are renting, you know, I would reach out to the landlords to please explain to your tenant that, you know, they're not supposed to be, um, you know, gathering. If they're not living in the household, everyone's supposed to stay at home. And then there are those also that are still out on the streets that have no home to go to. So, you know, we're trying to get them um, into the homeless shelter program 
you know, to have them um, relocate, but some of them just don't want to. They don't want to go. They say they ask us to leave them alone because they're fine out there where they're at. But you know, we're we're trying to keep everyone safe. You know, and we're going to do the best that we can. You know, to to ensure everybody's safety. What about um, the the mayor's council authority? Um, mayor Savars, I know that you had mentioned that you had a conversation with Dr. Hoa, who's the chair of the PAG, and you plan on uh, providing information to your mayoral colleagues. Uh, I wanted to ask, though, do the mayors have the authority to issue like hmm. citations? Yeah, Mayor Alec um, does. I know that you 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 can issue for littering, right? And and, and do dogs. For mayor, we're going to put you, you on patrol. Can you, but can you issue citations for people that are that are out um, when they should be inside? And not a, for, based on the executive order, no, we don't have that ability, that power to do that. However, what we do is we actually, you know, let me share with you. Last week we had GPD full force. You know, we opened the the farmers market just for produce, and. I had Saturday morning, we had five police officers uh, from the task force that were out there actually policing, policing the farmers or whoever, the vendors to make sure that they were social distancing, practicing social distancing. Everybody had a mask. We had signs that said no mask, no entry. Um, you know, the vendors had signs that said practice social distancing at each of their stalls. And um, then on Sunday, we had actually public health. Uh, two individuals from Public Health Department of Public Health Environmental Division, Health Division, came out and they were uh, actually seeing, checking on all each and every vendor. One of the concerns that Public Health said is that they are the regulating agencies. They are the ones that actually, um, you know, several weeks ago I had the concern before PCOR 1 with over 100 cars at a facility and you know that gaming was going on. Um, and so, you know, I kept trying to, I was communicating with um, the front office, but at the same time, they were commuting with G GPD and um, GPD and environmental health. It was the following week that they finally got a hold of me and said, Department of Public Health is the enforcing agency. They are the ones that are going to go out with GPD to break these things up and give the citations and whatnot. But at this point, the mayors can only be the advisors. Mm. Uh, and, you know, in some cases, I went to a, a, a place across from the sports complex. It was a house that had more than 12 cars. And you know that they don't all live in that household. And so I kind of talked to the family and they said, Mayor, this is our private property. Mm. What we do in our private. But, you know, I said, one, the concern was you guys weren't wearing masks. They said, but we're eating. You know, they were having family dinner. Um, it was, I guess, mom's birthday and the, the children from their other households came over to wish her happy birthday. I've seen birthday parties where they just drive by with their balloons and, and the person that's celebrating stands at the front of their house and right. waves at their family members going by. So it's it's how we can advise them, but we can't enforce it. That's when GPD, we, we can get the assistance of GPD and public health. Right. right. But if you can issue citations for littering, right. mm. and it's just what uh, something that can be done through the legislature... Yeah, let's get yeah, so, to... so, you know, the citations is not just the public law. We have to, like Mayor Alec, I mean, when I said, show me what you're doing, we have to go back. When we're citing the citation, you go back to the Guam Code annotated, mm -hmm. not the public law. Right. So even if they created a public law, it has to be registered in the Guam Code annotated. Mm -hmm. Mayor Alec, right, Mayor Alex? What, what do you think, though, Mayor? I mean, why not just gun it and cite people and worry about it later? It gets thrown out. It gets yeah. thrown out of the courts. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so you, you actually have to have, you have to make sure that you cite it correctly. Um, like like my first citation, um, nothing ever went wrong with it. It was just that uh, there was a miscommunication between myself and the court. But the second time around, you know, as long as you get the, the as long as you, you note the correct citation, you'll be okay. Uh, but yeah, we don't have that authority. And even if we tried to, like Mayor Sawar said, it'll probably be thrown out of court. And I've had to go in front of a judge. So you'll yeah. actually have to go in front of the judge. So y'all are just supposed to be snitches, right? And just call GPD. Mm -hmm. That's what they want you yeah. guys to do. I mean, it just seems like a lot of double back. And uh, and so, and we heard from Mayor Savar. She's going in and she's saying, hey guys, break it up, break it up. What about uh, you, Mayor Alec? 
residents of PD? Are they doing gatherings that you got to go in and say, hey, disperse, disperse? No, we follow the rules in PD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why no one's running against you. <laughs> Man, wow. Louise. Not really. Okay, no, yeah, we follow the rules in PD, so we're, we hope, you know, God willing, we'll be okay. Right on there. Mayor Louise, what about It's good morning. Too, so. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Louise? Oh, my God. Oh, we, we do cover a big area, and a lot of times um, we're getting calls from the neighbors that are seeing a lot of cars. People are still um, getting together to exercise on their private property, so, you know, um, um, you know, uh, when I, I've gone out to them, you know, I, I found them like doing different stations, but again, it's on their private property. And so, you know, um, I've just explained to them, well, uh, you know, you don't know live here and right now we're in PCOR one. So they, they said they understand. And so, you know, um, I've been going by checking out, you know, in different places every, every evening, um, you know, after the office hours and, um, you know, so I've seen that it has gotten better. Um, it's, they're not, uh, they're not uh, coming together the way they used to. And um, of course, the neighbors they 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 tell us what's going on or when there's a lot of cars. So um, you know, we continue to look out and again, like I said, you know, reach out to them. All we can do is 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 talk with them because it's their private property. Right. Um, we're going to switch gears uh, just a, a little bit here uh, as the whole island last night and yesterday was flooded. I feel like God was punishing Dr. Akimoto and all of us. Just, you know what, guys, let's wash your island clean real quick. Everybody hose it down. Get the water blaster. Hose down this ugliness. Uh, so we got a video. We got the video. We're going to pop this video up and then we're going to come back and ask you guys about flooding in the, in the villages and, you know, more mayorly kind of things. Right. So uh, stand by, uh, Mayor. Go ahead, Jeff. Really and, uh, not too we bad this video. through we're gonna pop Tuesday this and Wednesday, our, uh, but then that disturbance could bring more showers and thunderstorms to Guam on Thursday. This is, uh, different, so really not a bad submitted, uh, videos of flooding weeks, but that again, happened the showers and thunderstorms uh, this afternoon, and tonight, every, and then the next couple day. afternoons yes. with isolated thunderstorms. That's the thing to be also. careful for and to watch out for. Okay, so, uh, Show. Right. And okay. uh, he actually called this. So every Monday we get a little weather report. To Guam on Thursday. This is, uh, different. So really not a bad submitted, uh, videos of flooding. Weeks, but again, happened, the showers and thunderstorms uh, this afternoon, and tonight, and then the next couple afternoons with isolated is thunderstorms. That's the thing to be okay. careful for. Go ahead. And uh, he actually called this. So every Monday we get a little weather report. To Guam on Thursday. This is, uh, different. So really not a bad submitted uh, videos of flooding. Weeks, but again, happened, the showers and thunderstorms uh, this afternoon, and tonight, and then the next okay. couple afternoons with isolated is thunderstorms. That's the thing to be okay. careful for. Okay. Whoa. Wow. It was really bad yesterday. It was. Um, how about in you guys' neck of the jungle? Let's just go around, Robin. We'll start with you, uh, Mayor Savars. Dedito, flooding issues yesterday? Always? You know, every, yeah. Uh, well, not always. Which we made sure that the drainages were clear. But, you know, with that flash, flood, rain, mm -hmm. heavy rain for several hours, anything, even things that don't get flooded were flooded. Uh, you know, we, we had... Um, we were in different areas, but, you know, just waited for the water to recede. And then things were, you know, there's still some problem areas that we're addressing with DPW, but uh, we try to manage that. But we didn't have rivers, uh, you know, we had in our low line areas, we always experience certain things. So we always make sure that the drainages are clear and that there are uh, places for the water to go. We, we have a lot of ponding basins and water catchments. Mayor Louise. Um, well, we have certain areas that do um, that do flood, and um, it's a reoccurring problem for um, a few of these areas. 
Um, I had to relocate two families last night because, um, you know, their house was getting flooded, water coming into their units. And so, um, you know, we were able to relocate them to a hotel. And, um, you know, um, we've also been um, working with uh, Homeland Security and DPW in regards to the flow of the water. So, um, you know, certain areas, uh, you know, we do have the Harmon Sink area. So um, I know somebody also posted um, about that, uh, you know, the, there was a, a vehicle that was floating away on the main road. And so um, they wanted to make sure that no one was in that vehicle or hurt. So, um, but uh, those, you know, those are uh, different areas. And, um, you know, if, if there's something, uh, a place that we have missed that has not been, um, you know that we're not aware of you know i'm i'm just you know hoping that um all the people will will call in if they're having any other issues because um we do have our crew that have uh drew you know gone around the whole village and um you know to to see uh and find out all these uh problem areas that that flood you know even just um uh you know one hour or even 30 minutes you know there's already flooding going on so you know, um, we continue to go out and um, clear storm drains, you know, and do what we can to, um, you know, to, to get that assistance to help the water flow out where, you know, it doesn't affect our residents. Mm -hmm. Mayor Alec, I want to say, I feel like PD is a flooding village because you got the whole Nimitz Hill. Correct, yeah, it's flooding. You know, we have the infamous Polaris Point area. Right. But um, on top of that, the, the village proper, we, uh, those of us down in the village, the village, we get the rain from the, from the, from the mouth, from the hills. Uh, so yeah, we did have uh, several complaints. Nothing, no life-threatening or um, residential flooding, but of course, you know, the, the heavy water flow. One of the things that, that was important that has been important for me is the clearing of the drainages, the waterways. And so, um, and that brings me back to the executive order. Um, we, DPW is charged with a lot of the main, uh, with the, the route, routed roads, right? So route one, route six. And, um, I, you know, there are other people that are more important, right? So uh, we'll, we'll use our district funds to clear this out, but I could not hire a backhoe. I could not rent any equipment because, of the executive order and the ban and so, on construction yeah. right? right right exactly because yeah. they're considered construction so nobody wanted to do the work for us wow. thank goodness for uh brawny men and shovels <laughs> <laughs> so we're okay <laughs> yeah so but we, we did we did okay you know for for the most part right but hopefully uh well saturday at noon we have a contractor ready to come out to to do some clearing uh through you know the road the um waterways that, right. that need to get it just it just really goes to show that you guys are frontliners yeah. to everything happening in community in your community right so thank you guys uh, we'll for, go for everything we'll go around robin uh, closing statements uh, mayor savares uh and then we'll get mayor louise and, and mayor alec and we'll move on to our doctors and our public health uh, part of the show so go for it mayor savares yes you know we just want to emphasize the importance of even families wear your mask while you're at home i mean none of the three of us aren't wearing our mask but we're by ourselves but when even with your families at home um you know i mean i have a household of four and we we still have to i have two elderly but you know we're seeing that frontliners are are now testing positive and then they still have to go home to their families so please the importance of wearing masks even around your families if you see um uh, families or people gathering in little groups uh, and they're not wearing masks, call GPD. I hate to say that, but you know what? Our Denito precinct is always filled, but there's somebody or 311. Call them up and they'll send a group out if you can't get a hold of the mayors. But the importance, we've got to flatten this curve. It's just going up so high that it, and it's really affecting our communities. So we got to do everything just together to sit, you know, to take care of our people. Mayor Louise. Yeah, I, will, uh, I just, um, I want to thank you for the opportunity. And also, um, you know, I, I ask that um, anyone who has any issues, you know, with um, with anything, I mean, if they'd like to be a part of our, our neighborhood crime chat, um, crime watch chat, or just our so Tatua social chat, um, to please call in and if you know of someone in need that may need help or um you know uh 
please, uh, we're, our office is open from eight to five. We're receiving phone calls and um, doing email. So, you know, anyway, um, you know, if, if there's any need or concerns that you have, please give us a call or let us know. Um, you know, uh, we try to be everywhere, we, you know, go all around, but um, there may have been some, something we have missed. So please, if you can, call it in. Um, our office is open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. And um, we just ask that everybody do your best to stay safe. You know, we'll continue to, um, you know, let you know when, as soon as the food is delivered, we have, you know, a date may be scheduled for food distribution, but then it doesn't come at the time that they say it's gonna come. And so, you know, that's why um, we ask that everybody uh, try to get on the chat because as soon as delivery is being made, we send out that information right away. Yeah, I heard that so, chat's uh, popping. Yeah. Uh, Mayor Alec? Well, you know, we want everyone to stay safe and to exercise around your homes. I do go out and I do see people walking around their homes, which is which is great. Uh, I, I do that around the house here. And um, for the people of PD, you know, they, they know that they can give us a call if we need to do a, a grocery run or a hardware store run. We will continue to do that. And most especially, be healthy, eat healthy. We do... Uh, provide the service of pickup and delivery for the uh, fish, the Afatunania, the farmers co-op of Guam right. every Wednesday. So the, you know, the residents know that you can give us a call and we can pick that produce bag up for you and any special orders that you may have. Of course, you just have to pay for it. Um, but other than that, you know, be, be healthy, stay safe. We are resilient people and we will get through this together. Thank you so much, uh, mayors. Again, uh, Mayor Jesse Alagapini, Mayor Melissa Zavaris, Dedido. Uh, Mayor Louise Rivera, Tamuning Tumon Harmon. Be safe. God bless you. And I know you guys are going to be busy. Everyone's going to be going to the beach and the park. So uh, just be vigilant. And thank you, okay? Snitch. Thank you, too. Yeah, snitch. Snitch on them. Yes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Straight up, huh, Bree? <laughs> Y'all be snitching. <laughs> yeah, uh, 